I'm Brandon Kane, General Manager of Green Star Co-op in Ithaca, New York. Uh, and I've been asked to do sort of a practical case study of what Green Star has been up to over the last few years. And assuming this has worked. So a little bit of context at first. We are coming up on our 44th year, pretty amazing. Uh, we now have two locations. Uh, so our combined square footage of our two main locations, retail, the retail square footage is only about 8,000 square feet. But out of that, we've managed to pull uh, up sales to about 20 million a year annually at this point. So sales are tight. Sales per square foot are around 2,500 uh, right now and climbing. Um, and back in 2007, we also bought an adjacent property. We were quite lucky. Um, not a lot of property com becomes available, as board members here can attest in our area. Uh, but a 17,000 square foot property uh, became available across the street. We at first thought that it might be practical to develop a store there for a variety of reasons. It's not. Uh, mostly the railroad in that area does not want us putting a light. Uh, so uh, we ended up uh, converting, or at least using the first half of that space to uh, do an off-site warehouse uh, to really augment our purchasing so we can expand the stores a little bit and not take up a lot of storage space there. And also we moved our administrative offices there as well. And uh, so we're all here for the same uh, reason, more or less. Competition is heavy and increasing significantly and we definitely are no strangers to that. These are some photos from Wegmans uh, Natural Market in our area. Uh, and uh, we basically used to... Uh, we, I would say we peacefully coexisted with uh, Wegmans. We shared, uh, we enjoyed sharing market share together. Um, but then about two years ago, they went from approximately 4,000 square feet in their natural uh, marketplace to about 15,000. So, you know, twice as much as our stores combined at two different locations. Uh, and margins an issue, we're all talking about that. Our average margin is around 38%. And Wegmans easily pulls, you know, an average of 30, 32%. And we're all having that conversation today. How do we compete with that? You know, can we even come close to that? So uh, when considering expansion, growth, survival, all of that, you have to take into perspective the strong local competitor now and that it's not as peacefully coexisting as it was in the past, right? Uh, so we began asking ourselves, in what ways can we differentiate Green Star from Wegmans? Maybe it's not pricing at all. Uh, or how can we compete on pricing you know, in some form or another? And how can we compete with such a large, pervasive organization when we're just this individual, small co-op started 43 years ago in a tiny town of Ithaca, New York? with only 30,000 residents. Uh, so one of the first things we did, we're talking about a lot of community involvement. Uh, you know, all of us are involved uh, in supporting our community in some way or another. Uh, but we decided to drastically invert where we were putting our money. At, at one point when I first started with Green Star, we were spending a great deal of money in uh, advertising, uh, specifically media advertising, print, radio, some television at some point. And we were spending uh, a large portion of our operating budget. And we decided to invert that and really emphasize what we can do and how we can be involved in our community. So we cut back significantly on our advertising budget and actually put that towards our sponsorship and donations. Um, we also, I mentioned it in here, um, well, yep, we shifted and inverted that. And I think that was actually, that played a key role in uh, people's perspective of how Green Star played in the marketplace. Uh, also, uh, we made a concerted effort and continue to do so towards diversifying our membership, our staff, um, being inclusive of other cultures, uh, and we also created a very successful low income discount, which I would recommend everybody explore because that really changes the whole landscape of how people, how they perceive your co-op and, and how uh, it, it helped us overcome a you know, sort of elitist perspective that we've been dealing with for, for our 40 years history. And this is just a photo of also an example of community involvement. We recently uh, actually purchased the scoreboard for our local uh, roller derby rink, which is awesome. <laughs> like half of our staff members have kids on the derby league. Uh, so uh, faced with the pressure to expand but no realistic prospects in our area, we had to start thinking creatively about what we were going to do. And we realized that 18,000 square foot building, about 8,000 square feet of it, was completely undeveloped and essentially had become an off-site storage spot for us for every piece of crap that we couldn't keep in the store anymore. So uh, the first thing we did was centralize our production. We, uh, we converted, and this is just, la we're only six months actually after opening at this point. So this is just recent. Uh, we converted about half of that space, 4,000 square feet, to a centralized commissary bakery. And we were doing production. Uh, we were, uh, our large store was doing our deli prepared foods production. Our small store had the bakery, and, and that was going on for a number of years. We consolidated that, put that off site. And it resulted in a uh, massive amount of effi improved efficiency in terms of transportation. And keep in mind, that's also uh, actually right next door to our warehouse. 
Uh, so this is what our transportation loop used to look like before we uh, located our production offsite. And this loop here, these seven trips, were done two or three times a day. You know, and it was just moving product from the warehouse to the stores, and then the stuff that was produced at one store to the other store, and then the bakery back to the other store. And, and it was just a massive amount of time and energy spent logistically just trying to get food from one place to another. When we centralized our production, now we had a warehouse, a central kitchen, bakery, and sushi all under one roof. We were able, this is what it looks like now, our transportation. We, are, we were able to do this two times a day, get all the food we need. So we, we cut our uh, transportation needs in half. Uh, so not only were we able to centralize and lower the cost of the fresh food production, but we were able to free up a lot of retail space by moving those food productions out of our stores and, uh, and allowing that just to actually grow into retail space. And we're still in, uh, currently resetting our stores. Like I said, it's fairly recent um, to, as a result of that. And uh, now that we're moving this, uh, another key aspect, and uh, I think it was Kevin uh, from Hunger Mountain that I was sitting with earlier said, you know, what's that difference? I got up and said that as well, uh, that what's the new alternative now? Can it be co-ops as a community space? Well, I was like, that's cool, because we just built a community space. Uh, the, Remaining about 3,500 square feet right next to the commissary actually feeds right into a, a community rental space. And uh, that also has been only open for a few months, but to this day uh, we've hosted uh, wedding uh, anniversaries, wedding receptions. Uh, the school district now regularly holds meetings there. We hold our member meetings there, of course. Um, but uh, you know, I, that was something Ithaca really needed, and I have an inkling most communities need more community, affordable community rental spaces, and it's just really cool that we happen to be linked to a place where we can provide all the food for that as well. So we get, we get into you know, proprietary catering, which is awesome. And, and so the, now we have a new arm of business that we didn't have before. We're not just food re retailers, we are catering, and we're producing food for this location, and also producing food for other locations, like uh, other delis and the schools in, in our area. And uh, here's an example of some of our print materials. Um, and down here is fuzzy in the bottom right here in corner, but that's our public uh, meeting space, which was this dingy, horrible, wet, old railroad uh, beer distributor warehouse up until about six months ago. Kind of gorgeous now. And uh, looking to the future, the centraliz centralization primarily has allowed us to consider other satellite locations that do not take up as much labor as uh, you would when you put another store with all of the food production in it. So uh, we're looking at possibly expanding our West End store. We're looking at putting a store up in the Cornell campus, our College Town store next year. And we are all, this is a, a, a drawing of the College Town store that's supposed to be put in place, currently working on the design inside. Um, and we're also considering working with uh, Syracuse Real Food Co-op, uh, possibly uh, collaborating with them and maybe operating uh, them as another satellite. They're about 60 miles away, but this consolidation of production and ability to transport to remote locations has allowed us to consider this at this point. I think I'm totally at time, so, and that's my last slide. Yeah. Thank you. You are. <laughs>